What makes someone unstoppable? Today on this episode, we're going to unpack what makes someone able to push through any obstacle, circumstance, or naysayer to achieve their goal. But before we jump in, I want to remind you to please subscribe and share. And if you'd like to get in deeper conversation, you can join my private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. If you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, you can support us financially at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. On this episode, we're going to be interviewing Tracy Schmidt, aka Unstoppable Tracy, who has sailed the oceans of the earth in the World Cup straight into the hearts of millions, making huge differences. We're going to talk with her about what it took for her to be unstoppable in every goal she pursued. Tracy, thank you so much for being on Chair Chats. I'm so excited. Like, this is my air clap, right? (laughs) You can reach, but I can't. I love it. (laughs) Um, I, you are known as Unstoppable Tracy. And so I want to dig in and unpack that for our audience because There is so much that we can go up against in this world, whether it be a physical obstacle, a mental obstacle or emotional obstacle, relationships, finances, jobs. Like, I mean, the list could go on and on for obstacles and circumstances. And I am all about living a life of victory and being bigger than those circumstances. So I'm so excited I found you. Um, and I want to get uh, let our audience get to know you more. So tell us who Unstoppable Tracy is. Well, hello, Pauline. I am so honored to be on this fabulous show with your phenomenal listeners and, and uh, humbled because you, my friend, are making a difference. And, you know, one of the things I love about you was even in our preparation, we have this conversation about we forget our friends forget that we have a disability and and my understanding is most of our target audience are people with disabilities but we have all walks of life they might be visible disabilities and visible disabilities and it's funny we both have short stumps but we do not have a shortage of obstacles out there and and that that's true and you know it wasn't my disability it was you know my dad dying or losing love in my life or you know, a job that downsized and it was, I loved it. And so it's time to move into a new career or being a sailor and, and devoting, you know, many years of sleeping out of my car a lot and eating Cheerios a lot and, you know, and then not making the Paralympic trials, even though I got to make it in World Cup able-bodied against Viking-like men, barely any women, 27 men, three women, everybody had hands and legs. And here's me on that World Cup start line. And I didn't make it to the Paralympics. You know, so uh, it, it's, it's so true about what makes you unstoppable when your heart is broken, whether it's for love, whether it's for finance, whether it's for COVID, turning your world upside down, and you're depressed because of isolation or because your income has just stopped or you're laid off, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, and it's, it's, it's that unstoppable being kind of forced, being born this way. Like I didn't choose, you didn't choose. Well, I don't know your story, but I didn't choose to be born without my arms and my legs. Right. I was just a kid two years old that wanted the cookie from the cookie jar, right? And so I was just an ordinary kid that did whatever it took to steal the cookie from the cookie jar that mom said no to, right? How do I figure it out, right? You just roll over and you figure out on what to climb on and you get that cookie. 
And I'm not being a hero. I'm just being like any other two-year-old spirited, right? But that's what I got to bring to busting Uber into Canada. What do you mean they're saying, no, we can't have Uber? In it? What do you mean there's a pilot strike at Air Canada? What do you mean Canadian Airlines and Air Canada are forced to do a merger, right? So they bring in unstoppable Tracy because it's no and no doesn't mean no, you can't have that cookie. It just means K-N-O-W. We just don't know, right? We don't know. And so people like you and me, Pauline, we figured out a long time ago, we just don't know, K-N-O-W. How are we going to do this crazy ponytail with no hands, right? And it might be twirling our head on a couch and we make a massive knot in our hair, but it holds it like a fancy bouffant. Or it might mean asking a friend. Or it might mean looking all sexy and sassy and glorious like you with the down. Uh, my gender preference is men. I don't know what your gender preference is, but you know, uh, my understanding is opposite sex or same sex really love your hair down. So what a bonus that you're forced to wear your hair down instead of be uh, cheating and throw it in a ponytail on a hot day and look less sassy. So uh, I'm, I, uh, I'm glad that your hair is down. It looks lovely. Thank you. I, I think I think you, you you know rocking a bun or or a ponytail is just as sassy. So <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. It's much cooler. Yeah, yeah. And and don't and don't don't think I don't throw my hair up. My husband will. It, men are so different with their hairs, right? They use their hands and they like they pull your hair rather than their fingers. It's just so different. But you got to do what you got to do. Take yeah, no, no gain. So <laughs> yeah, nothing like a girlfriend that has long hair and knows a ponytail, right? Yeah, it's so true. I have a friend and and she's she's black, and so her hair when she gives me the ponytail it is the smoothest, lumpiest, free, tightest pull back ponytail on the planet, different than any other ponytail that anybody else gives me. Yeah. And I think it's because of her hair, right? Like she knows how to really draw it in and watch the, watch the lumps and the bumps. But yeah. you're right. Any men that I've dated that have been kind enough to give me a ponytail. Uh, but then, the, then the messy look is in. So what the heck? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bring on the lumps. Um, yeah. you know, and speaking of lumps, I mean, like you said, life is full of lumps and bumps and, um, heartaches and scrapes and bruises. And we're going to get hurt just by the mere fact that we're living. And so, um, how do we become unstoppable? And I love your first point about K N O W and making that distinction between K N O W no and N O no. And really yeah. it's not about, can we, it's how can we? Yes. Yeah. And it's okay that we don't know how, right? That's, that's the limitless secret. Right? It was like, well, I don't, know, I don't know how to write a book or do a cover or put it on Amazon, or I don't know how to uh, do stage hair when I don't have hands, or I don't know how to do a Facebook Live or a TV show, or I don't know how to raise children with a disability or walk a dog with a disability, and both of my legs end above my knees. I'm a four-way amputee. I don't know what your story is, but Same. I only know what I can see at the moment, mm -hmm. which is, and so I don't know how. And I didn't know how, for example, I would ski, right? But I wasn't going to figure that out on a couch at home. But that two-year-old that learned how to figure out the cookie jar, I didn't know how I was going to find the cookie. I had to just get started and fall off the stool and break the glass and be grounded. You know, I had to go through all of the rounds before I finally figured out how to get that cookie, right? Kids... They're smart in some ways. They learn you touch a hot stove, you burn your hand, but uh, not getting the cookie isn't enough motivation to stop. You just keep going until you figure out how to get that cookie. And so I wasn't learning how to ski on the couch. And I went out and one of the ways is who you surround yourself with, right? You surround yourself with a wonderful husband or great girlfriends for a ponytail. I surrounded myself with some fabulous skiers and now they had their arms and their legs and were sitting on a bench and they're sit skis, so people who are paralyzed from the waist down, they use a, a chair with skis underneath and outriggers, like crutches with skis on. And with their hands, they can hold those outriggers. But because I don't have my hands, you and I, 
would really struggle with some pretty expensive technology to make some outriggers work for us without our hands in a sit ski. And, and it's first day, so that's not available that first day. And duct tape didn't give me enough control. I went in the trees and face planted a lot. So I'm sitting on the bench at lunchtime trying to brainstorm with everybody. And my ski instructor, he's got his, his boots off in front of me and I've got my legs off uh, because it, it, they didn't fit well in the sit ski. Well, I start to think with my 11 year old inappropriate brain, <laughs> holy cow, he's got big feet, right? His feet were humongous. Right. And then I got a light bulb. Holy cow, my thighs, my stumps, can fit in men's ski boots. My thighs, my stumps, my legs look a lot like your arms. My stumps could fit in his ski boots. So that's what we did. We put my stumps in men's ski boots. And so I was standing, because I don't have my knees. Well, we did the first couple tries. We didn't get very far. We didn't even get on a hill. And I just face planted because ski boots are angled, they're canted. So then we turned the boots around. And so what we did is we put my thighs, my stumps in men's ski boots backwards. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right? I don't have any toes. I don't have any feet. And so the angle of the boot put me in that skier's duck squat position. Oh, wow. So we didn't know how I would ski. I wasn't going to figure it out on the couch. I wasn't going to figure it out Googling amputee in the 80s, right? There weren't that many double amputee skiing at that point with no hands, right? Most of anybody using that were skiing with a disability were sit skis. And so even though you don't know how you're gonna survive COVID or how you're gonna find your life partner or how you're gonna turn your, your income stream to adapt to the new world, right? Maybe you're being laid off of your job. Maybe you're a stage performer like me and Pauline and there's no stages right now, what is it that you're doing to adapt? Or what is it you're doing to learn how to cook for yourself or groom yourself or advocate for yourself that yes, you can have children, even if you're paralyzed from the neck to the toes, right? We can all have children. We can all have animals. We can all work. We can all have love. Whatever you dream, we can all write a book. Whatever you dream. Uh, but it does, and it doesn't matter that you don't know, K-N-O-W. What matters is that you go for it. What matters is you take action. What matters is you surround yourself with people that do know, have figured it out. And, and, and you'll find your backwards boots. Even though you don't know how right now, you just embrace the possibility, embrace the possibility, even though you don't know how, you can do it. And you don't, you don't avoid failure, right? Will Smith I'm, and somebody before him, but I know him as saying there's only one difference between failure and success. And that's one more try, right? All Walt Disney went bankrupt nine times before he became Walt Disney, right? Every basketball player, every famous singer, every New York Times author, every TV show host like Pauline, every international speaker with over 100 million views, who would have thought, right? I failed a ton of times for about 48 years before I tapped into the formula of 100 million views. And that happened in one year. So it's one more try. The only difference between failure and success, if you are failing, you're exactly where you need to be. You are exactly where you need to be. You are just on your journey to success. Even wow. if you don't know how, you just one more try. Don't stop. Wow. I feel like we can just close the interview right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that works. <laughs> mic, dro mic drop. But, <laughs> but we're not going to do that because this is amazing. I want to just recap because there was so much in what you just said. And well, what, I got, what I got from what you said right now was one, take action. Right, right? You're not, whatever it is that you want to do in this world, whether it is date and find a relationship or get that dream job or create that business or um, write that book or make a difference in some, in some capacity, 
you're not going to do it behind a screen or a tablet or your phone on the couch or in your chair, wherever you sit. Um, so take action and in taking action, what stops us from taking action from what I heard you say is our fear of failure and our fear of failure is so paralyzing more than any disability that we could ever have together. Right? Like yeah. that is it. I, I, and I, and I know it sounds cliche, right? Like the disability lives in your mind. And for a lot of us with physical disabilities, we're like, no, it doesn't. Hello. Look at my eye. <laughs> There's obvious things missing here. Right. Um, but there are so many of people with disabilities that are making waves and making a difference like you, Tracy, um, and inspiring people that there's evidence that it's possible. And that's what I love about what I do on Chair Chats is just bringing forth the evidence that you can be unstoppable no matter what your circumstances. Because I feel like as people with disabilities, there's so much out there to point to as to why we can't have or do what we want in this world, right? And um, going back to what you were saying, surrounding yourself with people that either have figured it out or maybe they haven't figured it out, but they're willing to play and think outside yes. the box, right? Yes. Yeah. What do you think about out thinking outside the box? Like who would have thought of putting the shoes on backwards? Right. And, and I didn't figure it out, right? I had to jump in and just keep being present, like eyes open, what's around me? What are some clues? What can I try? And then being brave enough to go on a big run that was called, oh my goodness, it was called, it was, it was called OMJ with some backwards boots to try it out, right? And so is, is who, who we, we don't know what those solutions are. Uh, and I think, you know, we were all different personalities. There's thinkers and there's planners and there's extroverts, and there's introverts, and there's the feelers, right? And there's all sorts of different personality types, and nobody is inside the box one of those variables, right? Because the longer we live, the more we adapt, and the more we connect. And I feel like as people with disabilities, we are thrown in to a variable that teaches us about adapting and connecting. And so, and that doesn't mean everybody, and it doesn't mean every single time, but it's one more life experience. And so like, so for example, like what about thinking inside the box and what you know and how many times you've adapted, I think is what gives you the magic in inside the box, outside the box, or just get rid of the box, right? And so an example of that story would be uh, Canadian Airlines was our national airline. What's a national airline in Hawaii where you are? Um, well, we're, we're part of the na nation of the U S but Hawaii has Hawaiian airlines specifically. Hawaiian airlines and United airlines, right? Yes. All of the airlines way back when they kind of went bankrupt when the discount airline chain started to thrive, right? It's kind of like COVID. A lot of people are having their world turned upside down and their business is changing quickly overnight. Like Uber in the taxi world overnight taxis had to like their online platform revolutionized, disrupted the norm. COVID is disrupting the norm. And so uh, Canadian Airlines, they had been through mergers and bankruptcies with Ward Air, with Pan Pacific, with a dozen different airlines. So when it came time for the Canadian Airlines staff to merge with the Air Canada staff, the Air Canada staff had been well over 30 years. Uh, they'd started out as a government-run airline, and then they became an independent offering. But that title of entitlement of staff that had worked with the government, and so therefore you've got your government wages and benefits and all those, but then you're now you've got to be profitable, and you're not run by the government anymore, right? You need to be profitable to your investors and your stakeholders, and the world's turned upside down. What I found was the Canadian Airlines staff that had been through Ward Air, been through Pan Pacific, been through a dozen different mergers, they were like, okay, this is sad. I love Canadian Airlines. I love my family, that, of my work world family. Uh, this sucks. 
but it's happening. So I might as well just figure out, okay, what's the new way? How do you do check-in? How do you uh, get your flight prepped? How do you do your flight schedule? How do you figure out who's working what shift when? What's your seniority uh, scheme, right? And they just started asking questions for decision-making for what is the future to propel forward very quickly. Whereas the Air Canada staff were like, what? No way, this is awful. This is, we are Air Canada, we are successful. And they were petitioning better dead than red, you know? And, but it's inevitable, you're merged. So you can resist it or you can move on with it. But it's, and, and I think there's a nice balance between the two. I think we do need to celebrate the positive of what works. Like, it's so great you can stick up your hand and a taxi driver drives by and you can get in a vehicle for those that can jump in any random vehicle, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also really great that you can use technology and not have to use cash and have a competitive place where the prices are the best price possible for customers and they're super safe because it's super competitive. So if your cab isn't clean and nice, your rating scale is gonna get you out, right? Like there's benefits to both. So celebrate the benefits and figure out how to move forward, right? Taxi drivers, get online platforms, figure it out. Maybe do both, be an Uber driver and a taxi driver, right? Get both, who knows? So propel forward. So when you say inside the box or outside the box, right? The, the Canadian Airlines staff were kind of like, okay, I've been in this box, that box, that box, that box. And I know there's a ton of boxes. And the best way for me to be happy quickly is to figure out how to get to that working box versus I like this box and this box works. And, uh, and then you've got blinders on, right? You're like the horse with those. I forgot what they're called now. What's the fancy called blinders. Oh, they are called blinders. Yeah. The blinders. And so they don't see what their options are. They don't realize. Yep. Just go. Uh, so I, I loved it. Yeah. So I loved air Canada and, uh, I loved, I loved then merging in with the Canadian Airlines go for it attitude. And there was benefits to both worlds. Yeah. Air Canada was more successful and stronger and had better business strategy. Canadian Airlines were better problem solvers and, and good at activating change capability. So together was a phenomenal new airline, right? Um, so what I hear you saying is it's okay to look at what you've accomplished and celebrate those and what works and at the same time be okay with change right and and part of being unstoppable is being able to like as we say in hawaii go with the flow and just and and see where where the wave takes you and i really um i think that's so it's so important because so many of us are resistant to change and even myself, right? Like with this whole COVID-19 at the time that we're recording this, this is in the middle of the pandemic. And it is like this word, quote unquote, new normal, right? The new normal. What does that look like? It scares me. And I, <laughs> I have resisted it, but I'm now starting to say, okay, what if I don't resist it? What if I can embrace the change what would that look like then? And asking the questions, asking questions is so important in our lives. And there's a saying that says the quality of your life is based on the quality of the questions you ask yourself. Yes. And, yeah. And so I wanted, you know, to, I know we're talking about the how, right? We were saying, you don't know how need to know how, but we're talking about the how, how to be unstoppable, you know, surround yourself with positive people, think outside the box, get rid of the box. Um, you know, try again, embrace the change, um, all these different things that we can take away about how do we be unstoppable, but why? Like, who cares, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, what, what, what does life look like when you're unstoppable? Can you speak yeah. to that? Well, absolutely. Uh, I think, and, and uh, I love what you're saying about questioning. And like, and with COVID and that, and I love your advice about the, the quality of your questions matter. And so asking strength based questions. So none of us have ever skied before. None of us have ever lived in COVID before, but all of us have lived through an obstacle. 
So, so instead of saying, what's the problem here in COVID, ask yourself, what worked last time I had a problem? What did I do last time I overcame an obstacle, right? And so I can take that story of overcoming the wipeouts and the failure in skiing and say, okay, what worked then and apply it to COVID. And, and, and so those strength-based questioning. And so what does unstoppable look like and, and that limitless life? I mean, you and I, we were born limb itless and i spell limb with a b i know hokey for all of our fellow people with disabilities and certainly the amputees that are really groaning out there okay tracy right limb itless <laughs> but i say that on purpose because for even those of you that aren't amputees like us we were all born limitless we were all born limitless without the b right and and i know that Pauline and I have every excuse on the planet to maybe be devastated. I don't know about Pauline, but I had 24 stages cancel in May, right? And just before COVID, I, I got a new condo, a new bed, a new couch, and a new car. I just took on $4,000 new debt every month right before COVID because I had all these great stages, 20 countries in 2019. I was in 20 cities before COVID already in January, February, March, halfway through March, like March 6th. 20 cities before, and not all in Canada, right? In Europe and all over North America. And so, and then the rugs pulled out, right? So I have every excuse. I'm single. What about my life partner? I'm all my money source is gone and you know all these different bits and pieces i have every source every reason to maybe be sad be depressed uh but i know that when i live a life of no excuses right no excuses to get into kindergarten even though there's no support workers no excuses to sail no excuses to date a millionaire uh which i have right and uh and it was me that kind of Put the halt on the relationship you think you'd be like what why wouldn't you be dating a millionaire right and and they, they were able-bodied right and no excuse to driving and no like when i lived a life of no excuses even though it's hard and i don't know what's going on to the listeners i don't know the heartbreak i don't know the love break i don't know the financial break i don't know what's going on in your world but i do know when I live a life of no excuses, I get to live a life mm. of no limits, right? No limits. I get to live in this beautiful condo. You can almost tell a nice, I hope you like my new couch, my new beautiful, beautiful couch. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and, and, and travel. And I can buy, if I feel like having a cute little Yorkshire Terrier that's $4,000, I can do it because that's my dream, right? Because I lived a life of no excuses. And I can, I can date heartfelt people. No longer does it have to be because somebody checks off some box of appearance or finances. It, it can just be somebody that speaks soul to soul. Wow. And, and realize that millionaire is defined in many different ways. Mm. It's, it's dollars, it's love, it's difference maker. Like Pauline is clearly a millionaire and being an extremely abundant million views of her shows, rapidly approaching one day, someday billion views. She is a millionaire difference maker, right? We are all millionaires in different ways. And, and, and it's just knowing, getting that, right? It took me a long time. Well, how, how come I'm unstoppable, Tracy? Was because I had some chip on my shoulder that I didn't get, right? Oh, you can't go in kindergarten. What do you mean? Oh, you can't sail. What do you mean? Oh, you can't ski. What do you mean? Oh, you can't, you know, play with the boys in skiing. Oh, you're a goody two shoes because you're disabled. Okay. So I'll smoke and I'll do drugs, which was terrible, right? It was awful. What do you mean? Like anytime anybody said that I wasn't something or tried to label me because of whatever, 
I would do the exact opposite, right? Just to be unstoppable. And then it wasn't until later that I realized it's not about unstoppable Tracy. It's about unstoppable you, like all you fabulous souls. When I got over myself about me, 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 right? It was when I started to hear people saying, you know what, you know, cause you shared your story of being told no in kindergarten. I, I decided I was going to write my book. I decided to not commit suicide this week. I decided to approach the love of my life and confess how I feel and whether they're, they feel the same way, I'm going to declare it. I'm going to be self-expressed and if it works, fabulous. And if it doesn't, move on, right? And people started coming to me and I realized I just got to get over myself. It's overly visible. There's no hiding the fact that I'm missing my arms and legs. And, and when, I, when I got past myself through some coaching with Pauline, I got to understand, not that I was trying to make my, visible, my disability invisible, but I got to see how to be my true self. And Pauline, I would love for you to talk about that coaching that you gave me. Oh, wow. Thank you. I, uh, I have goosebumps because oh. I'm like, who am I to coach you, right? Like, and I think we all ask ourselves, who am I? Yeah. And what you're saying is get out of your way because it's yeah. not about you. It's about who you can help next to you or in the next state or in the next country and you have done so much to impact people's lives. And I, even though I didn't mean to coach you, I mean, it was not like, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't like Tracy, can I coach you right now? I like, it wasn't, no, she wasn't, she wasn't, she was, she, we, we were just authentic. Yeah. And we were just having a conversation and do you mind if I, I share what well, you were going, what you were. Yeah. Why don't you give us some uh, description? Cause I think others might be feeling as I was. And so if you and I can benefit somebody to get out of their way, like you did for me. Yeah. Well, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. Cause I don't want to tell your side of the story. Um, uh, you know, from my side, I want yours to come through, but basically, <clears throat> Um, well, why don't you start with the context, right? You were, yes. with your I'm like, oh my gosh, in COVID, it's horrible what's happened. You know, black lives do matter. And not only have they digressed in that side of the world, I feel like people with disabilities are suffering from digression and people are patting me on the head and patting me on the shoulder. And, and one of my prosthetic legs is broken. So I'm using my power chair more often to grocery shop and I find like people are hugging me and not respecting social distance. And I find it condescending, although it's very sweet and kind. And uh, I wondered what she was experiencing and it was off air. So I was, you know, I was venting a little bit, girlfriend to girlfriend, yeah. not trying to be the inspiration on stage. Right. And, and, you know, Pauline just came back to me about the whole black lives matter, but I personalized the context. Yeah. And uh, so, and, and I really go ahead. Um, I basically was sharing with her that what I believe in the philosophy that I have in my own life that I apply to my life and it's not, it's sometimes hard to do because it's a big pill to swallow because it goes back to personal responsibility, right? And what I believe is that you don't get what you want in life, you get who you are. Okay. So I don't, I don't want you to think that this is my concept. This is a universal law. This is a universal, like the be, do, have model, right? If none of you are familiar, look it up, the be, do, have model, look up the law of attraction, the secret, you'll learn, you'll learn what it is, the basics. But, you know, we get who we are. So everything on the external part of our lives, everything that we experience on the outside is just a reflection of what we, who we are being on the inside and yeah. who we are who do we believe ourselves to be, right? Because our limits actually start inside, right? Our beliefs, am I worthy? Am I lovable? Am I good enough? Like those are the questions that whether we are conscious or not conscious of it are running through our brain in the background. And yeah. so reflecting on what is happening in our world with the Black Lives Matter and the protests I just question, because when we look at the system and all the stuff that needs to be changed, 
And it doesn't just go for what's happening right now with racism. It goes, if you have a disability, you can relate. The system is stacked up against us. We can point to exactly where the, the problems are, but it's overwhelming. So where do we start, right? Um, and so what I feel is like, well, who have we been being as individuals in our society yes. that is allowing all of this to manifest itself externally? And so um, what Tracy did, and I, again, like I said, I wasn't trying to coach you. I was just like sharing with what I was feeling in the moment, but she did yeah. personalize it. Um, and uh, you want, do you want to speak to that? about how, well, you, how yeah, you took it yeah. yeah well and then you just said who you were being it's what you invite and it was just a general conversation and I'm like holy cow Pauline you just let me see that who I'm in who I was being in that story that I told earlier in the conversation right I think you know I'm used to walking with my prosthetic legs both my legs and above me but I, I I've done it all my life so most of the time I present in the world standing on my prosthetic legs and they look like metal poles they're not and I wear skirts mostly because I'm independent with the dress whereas with pants I'm less independent so I wear a lot of dresses so you can see my prosthetic legs it's not that I have a story in my head I've long got over that but using the wheelchair the power chair out in the world because my legs are broken right now and i'm just feeling this extra vulnerability in the pandemic of being home and isolated 72 days or so right and all of those bits and all the programs and services are dialing back so there was just a lot of variables that caused me to be a bit more vulnerable and then in the power chair i think who i was being i was probably being somebody that was attracting sympathy because I was kind of probably feeling like on some level needing it uh, and not in a direct way, right? I'm out taking care of my groceries and I'm not letting my broken legs stop me. So I'm like, okay, here we go. I hate being out without my legs on. I like people to see me with my legs on, but I'm out there. I'm doing it and being all tough. But the reality is I was being all tough, right? I was being all, I can do it. I can do it rather than I'm just doing it, right? I was who I was being. And uh, I'm a big believer of, I know the law of attraction. And I also believe like who I am is the, the possibility of laughter, love, and magic. And so I make my decisions on, am I being in the space of laughter, love, and magic? And they influence my business decisions, my relationship decisions, my grocery store decisions, right? And so when that person condescendingly hugs me, my head, how I try to not be defensive and rude to that person is, okay, so what's a laughter, love, and magic kind of response to this woman? And, and so that's how I be back, but I'm not self-expressed. Mm. So I'm not in that moment because right. of having a story myself. And so you helped me see that when you contextualized it to, you know, and you were, Pauline was by no means blaming me. She wasn't pointing a finger saying, well, who are you being to get hugged? She didn't say that. She didn't say, who is that guy being to get the officer to break his neck? Like that was far from what the conversation was. It was a later conversation that we were, she just like, you know what all she said before this coaching, I know that I can't control what injustices there are and what standard operating procedures don't work for me and what protocol there is that's stacked against us. But I know I can control what I can influence. What can I do? What can I change? And where I have influence is myself. And so where I influence myself is who am I being in the world is what Pauline said to me. And so then I contextualized it to my own story of, okay, my legs are broken and I have to vulnerably go out with my legs off, which I don't often do. And uh, obviously who I was being was was possibly also playing a part in why people are tapping me and hugging me, right? right. My right. eyes are probably bigger than saucers than they normally would be because I'm like, okay, my legs are off. Are people looking? What's going on on some kind of subconscious level? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's okay. You know, what I love about what you did is that um, people can share wisdom and insight but if you're not willing to look back at yourself and self-reflect and be like be that person that's saying i'm responsible for everything that i am do being doing and having well then <laughs> it's it's all just 
empty words, right? And so we need to like take responsibility and it's hard to do that when there's so much to point out. And I love that you have those three words, those three words of love, laughter, and magic. And that's so beautiful. Now I'm like, what are my three words? Because that essentially- all our listeners three words. Yeah. And I want to know from our listeners, that's going to be my question to you as we close out this interview, because honestly, Tracy and I, it was supposed to be a 15 minute pre-interview call prior to this. And then we like talked for like two hours. So we did. We <laughs> did. And we didn't want to hang up. We just had other business we had to get to. We were yeah. forced to end the two hours. Exactly. So I know that this interview could go on forever, but before we end, um, if you are just enthralled with Tracy and just want to be enveloped in her love and laughter and magic. She has a book. <laughs> you have that virtual hugs, guys. This is what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so she has a book, and I would highly recommend getting it. Unstoppable You. The book doesn't say Unstoppable Tracy because it's no. not like she said. It's not about Tracy. She's just the mm-hmm. vessel in which she can remind us how we're unstoppable too, and we have so much power within us that we don't even realize. And when you don't realize it, you can't tap into it. Right. And so I, you know, where can they find your book, Tracy? It will, everyone can have a free download. Uh, if you visit unstoppable Tracy and uh, I don't like this humor with my fellow people who have disabilities, visible or invisible with the able-bodied world. I sometimes say, you know, I'm, Tracy with no arms or no hands and no legs and no letter E in Tracy, no extra parts. And I mostly <laughs> make that terrible joke because I, if you spell it with an E, you won't find me. So okay. no extra parts. And unstoppable is so unstoppable. There's two P's unstoppable Tracy.com. And that's on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and everywhere, including my website. And you can get a free download of my book from unstoppabletracy.com. And I'll send you the download. And the book is, is my story, kindergarten, skiing, sailing, you know, Air Canada, all the different stories. But it's also, I don't know if the, it, it, you can kind of oh, yeah. see. Yeah. Uh, it's a workbook too. Nice. So, you know, you and I talked about how motivation like washes away in the shower. And, and so what I think is, and you and I talked about it, self-accountability, right? It's okay. So I was the first four-way amputee to climb the Himalayas or bust up strikes at Air Canada or bust Uber into Canada or sail with Able Body Vikings, but I have to keep doing it. Yesterday, I needed to be somebody that wasn't hung up on going grocery shopping with my legs off, right? I still need to be accountable. I still fall off my bandwagon. So we have to continuously apply it. So with the book, at the end of every chapter, there's exercises for unstoppable you. So there's a story, and hopefully you hear your story through my story. But at the end, you ask yourself those quality questions, those strength-based questions to propel forward your life and your actions to be continuously unstoppable, not just motivated today, but inspired forever. And, uh, and, and I love Pauline's story about inspired. Yeah. You you share how you're not a motivational speaker. What are you, Pauline? (laughs) I do not, um, align with the, I, the word motivation. I align with the word inspiration. And for all of you who are maybe a little sensitive to the whole inspiration porn, I apologize, but my relation to the word inspiration shifted when I heard Wayne Dyer in an interview say, inspire means in spirit. And I think when people see me and they feel inspired, it's the spirit that comes through. When people get to witness Tracy's life on whether she's telling it on stage or in her videos, on her website, through her book, in conversation, like this is, this is not this is not an act, right? We are who we are and we are no different than you or, or based on our environments, we are just, we are ourselves and what people celebrate and what people see and how, what you said to bring it full circle, 
is that our friends often forget who that we even have a disability. Why? It's not like arms and legs sprouted from our bodies. It's not an it's not a magic trick, even though you're about magic, Tracy. It's yeah. not a magic trick. It is about our spirits. They are witnessing and in communion with our spirits. And that is when I be, what I believe if we can all get to there, then our world will be shifted and changed in the way that reflects what we what we who we are and what we believe. And so, um, Tracy, I want to thank you so much for gracing us with your wisdom and insights and your stories and getting out of the way. Because can you imagine if you stayed in your way, what the world or how many lives would have not been changed? Oh, right. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Um, and I want to ask the viewer, I want to ask you, what would be your three words of B? What would your philosophy of life? What is the, your possibility? Tracy is, I am the possibility of love, laughter, and magic. What is your life the possibility of? I'd love to know. Comment below. I want to also remind you to please subscribe and share. This episode has so much value. Please share it with your friends and family, anyone who's going through a difficult time. You can be unstoppable. And this is something we talk about in my private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. Please join us there. And if you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, please support us on patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you so much. And until we meet again, be blessed. Okay.